Today I'm going to show you how I made the 60s vibes pinafore dress with this statement collar and sleeve blouse. I took inspiration from the Wednesday Addams series on Netflix. I wanted a slightly gothic, little bit vintage style, but at the same time an easy wear that did not scream costume. To draft my pattern, I began with my basic bodice block. If you do not have one of these, take a commercial pattern you have used previously that fits you well. Trace it and remove all the seam allowances. If you have a pattern that has vertical seams, that's most of the work complete. If it is still formed with darts, then you'll follow a similar process to what I use here. You want to transfer all the darts in your bodice so that they go on the waistline and the shoulder line. Mark your new dart position with a straight line to the apex of your bust point. We will use this as a hinge point. We want to close the original dart together, pulling open the red line just drawn in the process. Cut the red line on the far side of the dart. Remember not to cut the whole way so that you can leave this as a hinge. Swivel, connecting the original dart legs together and tape into place. I use masking tape when drafting as I find I can draw over it easier than clear tape. Tidy up your edges so the curves are smooth. Our darts are now placed so we can create vertical seam lines as needed for our design. Next we will extend the paper from the waistline allowing us to create the skirt portion of the dress. Measure down at the front edge the distance from your waistline to your hips. Measure again the distance from your waistline to your hem. Draw out at your hip horizontally the measurement of your front hip divided by 2 plus 2 centimetres ease. Connect with smooth curves from the waist to the hip and then straight lines flaring out as much as desired to the hem. Your hem should be a slightly curved line. At the waistline we have a dart in the body section. This shapes our waist, pulling it in, in a 3D manner. We want to mirror this going the opposite way to the hip line. Draw a point on the hip line opposite the bust apex. Connect the dart legs of the bodice to this point. Extend down from this point to the hem. Though this line is straight, Later we will shape it slightly, adding a more curved appearance to remove any sharp angles we currently have. This smoothing process is done going around each section of our new pattern. This is what takes your pattern from the block to a pattern draft. It's easier on a full scale than this small scale here but you want to use your curved ruler to smooth out any points such as the bust apex and the waistline. You may need to add papering gaps to allow yourself to draw within them. We now have our vertical seam dress. It's made up of a front section and then a side front section. Mark notches at key points to allow you to match them during construction. I highly recommend tracing each section following the curved lines we made onto new paper. Keep this to work from in future projects. When drawing the lower skirt sides, don't forget to add that flare extension to add volume in our skirt. We can now shape this to our design. So in the future, this would be your starting point, taking a trace of the vertical seam blocks we just produced. 
Decide how low you want your dress top to sit, measuring from your neck downwards on your body. Mark this point on your front section. Draw horizontally across. Match this line onto your side front section and extend out as wide as you desire. Larger bust will require more width. Measure down from the underarm how low you wish your side to sit on your body and mark. Connect with a smooth curve similar to an underarm curve shape. We now repeat this process for the back. Looking at our back, we can see the darts already sit as required, so we do not need to adjust them. We can connect them with a smooth line. Don't forget to add notch points as you go. Measure on our front side the location of our underarm and match this on our back. Decide on your body how high you want your back to come above your waistline and mark this point. Connect the two with a curved line. Here you can follow the shape of the bodice from centre front to centre back. Now we form the skirt using the same waistline to hip measurement, waistline to hem measurement. We use half the back hip measurement plus two centimeters for the horizontal hip line. Join as before and extend the dart down to the hip line. We can now trace the side back section and the center back section tracing the smooth lines we made. Remember to include all notches. This is our pattern consisting of four pieces. Label up your pattern before you cut anything out. Use double notches on the side seam to ensure you match the correct sides during construction. To complete, you need to add a seam allowance of your choosing. I worked with one quarter inch on this project. Also add a hem allowance. Before proceeding with your final fabric, cut this out of a cheap fabric like Coleco or Maker Toil. You will usually need to perform a couple of fit adjustments following a pattern draft. It also gives you a chance to correct any design choices that you have made that you don't actually end up liking. For the fabric, I used a baby needle cord in black. I ordered it incorrectly for another project. When cutting needle cord, you should ensure the pattern lies in the same direction as the nap will make the colours look different if it opposite. Unfortunately, I had such a small amount of fabric I could not do this. I folded the fabric selvage edges to the centre, creating two folded sections to place my centre front and centre back. I then used the central part for my side front and side back sections, laying them upside down. At least this way, the nap will run in the same pattern, symmetrical around the dress. It's not ideal, but it's the best we can do here. The remaining fabric I will use to make pockets and straps later. The lining was a simple acetate and was cut with the exact same pattern pieces. This dress is actually really quite simple construction. If you made this with no pockets, you could lightly get it together in a day. The vertical seams of the main dress are pinned together to the front side panels. These are then sewn from top to bottom. Always work in the same direction to get a symmetrical finish. Fabric can shift slightly as thread through the machine at different speeds, top and bottom, depending on the feed dogs. It's only a slight shift, 
but if the left side shifts up and the right down, that can create a visual difference. So pick a direction and stick to it. The back of the dress was formed in the same way, pinning the side backs to the centre backs right side together. Again, I worked from top to bottom at my machine. The seams were overlocked individually to prevent fraying and then pressed open. If you don't have an overlocker, you can use a zigzag stitch on your regular machine, just going down each edge in turn. I will have some tips on pressing needle cord fabric later. The side seams will be formed in two ways as we have a pocket on one side and then on the other side we have a pocket and invisible zipper. I have in-depth tutorials on both of these techniques, so I won't go too deep here but allow you to see the general process. Check the links above to learn how to do this for yourself with lots of information on getting a good clean finish and step-by-step -step instructions. Here I began with the zipper and pocket side. The reason is this is the more complex of the two sides so it's better to do it first while your garment still opens. The pocket placement is measured down from the underarm and the pocket bag is pinned after a strip of interfacing is added. The interfacing adds structure to stop any wrinkling of the fabric afterwards. Working from the reverse, a 1cm deep box is drawn with a 1.5cm edge clearance left either side of the pocket opening. Sewing over this line, we then trim this down and understitch. Press this crisp, concentrating on the corners for neat, sharp edges. This isn't the best fabric for pressing as you will see as I work. You can pick up the edges of the fabric below. To eliminate that, you can use a pressing cloth or place paper between the layers of fabric as you sew. I haven't to allow you to see the process as I work, but if I wasn't filming this, I would certainly be focusing on avoiding getting that shadow showing through. Another great method for cord is to use a scrap of cord itself as your pressing cloth. It helps prevent the nap being squashed down. Simply press with right sides together. We've reached the point of inserting the zipper now. Again, as suggested earlier, always work in the same direction when inserting zippers. For me, that's top to bottom. And as you work, remember to change your machine foot to the correct one.
This is our finished pocket. You can access the pocket fully and open the zipper. The excess zipper will be trimmed later. For the other side, this is more simple and is an inseam pocket. The link is above for this method. Again, I will not show it in full detail here as it repeats that tutorial. But as you can see, I'm pressing in a long, thin ham using just the tip of my iron on the same area. Always on the reverse side of the fabric. I have this on a low heat and just a little bit of steam to help lock it in position. To form the straps, I cut a long rectangle as wide as my fabric and 8cm deep. I press this in half. I then opened it up and pressed each long edge inwards by 1cm seam allowance. Once done, I folded it back in half on the first press fold and clipped it. This was top stitched up each side with a 0.5cm seam allowance. I was really tempted to use white top stitching thread here to tie it in with my blouse, but I decided not to so I could wear it over other jumpers too. I thought the statement white lines would look really effective on this material though. If you are using a less thick material that has less grip, you could create your strap as an inside out tube that you then turn the right way around. Needle cord has too much friction to slide in this manner smoothly. The lining is formed almost identical to the main fabric, except the seam allowance are finished as one and pressed towards the side. There are also no pockets, so the side seams are a straight line with one finishing at the base of the zipper. This seam I finished open to allow me to install the zipper. The straps are pinned to the back edge, angled outwards as I want them to cross at the back. I should have base stitched this in place before proceeding to add my lining but I didn't. My strap shifted slightly as a result on one side and I ended up going back to adjust them after. So baste them in place at this point. The lining is aligned all the way around the top edge with right sides facing. This is then sewn with a 1.5 cm seam allowance beginning and ending at the open zipper. Work carefully ensuring the fabric isn't bunched up. There is a lot of fabric under the machine now and it can be hard to work out what is what. If you are struggling, hand stitch this edge to help you before taking it to your machine. 
it's easier than having lots of pins in the mix too. Clip the corners and clip the curves. Trim down the excess zipper tape. Now we will understitch the top edge. This means we will sew the seam allowance to the lining, about 0.25cm from the top edge. This prevents all the lining from showing at the front when worn. Had I used a white top stitching on the straps, I would have skipped this and instead I would have top stitched this edge with white thread again to carry that design through the dress. When you follow a sewing pattern, you can always change finishing techniques to suit your preference and design choices. So understitching is simpler an invisible top stitching alternative. Turn this the correct way round and press. I kept all my pressing on the lining side of my garment to protect my fabric as much as possible. To complete the inside, I then tidied up around the zipper, folding under the fabric along the zipper tape and hand stitched it into place. Try and keep a little ease in your lining when you secure it as it prevents the lining pulling the garment out of shape and it also allows the garment a little give if it drags on your body or clothes below. You're less likely to damage your garment with wear. You don't want it too loose as it will catch in your zipper or create bulk that's visible from outside. Just enough to not create tension. For hems you can turn under the bottom edge twice and sew along the fold. As needle cord is a thick fabric I wanted to reduce the bulk so instead I finished the raw edge of my main fabric and my lining fabric with the overlocker. Next I pressed the main fabric under by 1cm only. I then used an invisible hand stitch to secure this. I like this method for hems as it gives a little bit of movement in the fabric and prevents that warped ripple effect you can sometimes get where the hem appears twisted. The more flared your skirt and the closer to a circle skirt it is, the more likely you'll struggle with that. So pressing and then hand stitching with a herringbone stitch like this will allow the fabric to settle more naturally without tension. Installing the dungaree hardware was the final step. Of course, you can use a regular big button here as an alternative. You don't need these straps to detach to get in and out of the dress, but I like the look of them. They were installed easy, piercing a hole through the dress and then hammering the back pin into the button from behind. The straps I then set to length on my body and then sewed in place. I should have ordered a couple of tri sliders to allow me to have adjustable straps. I decided not to trim down the excess strap so that I could make the addition in the future and that's why I left this long back. To accompany the dungaree dress I wanted a blouse with a statement collar. I considered drafting my own but decided to look through what I own and spotted this patina blouse by the Friday Pattern Company. It's got a nice big collar. I kept a classic colour combination and opted for white cotton. 
In my stash, I had this scrap of this lovely Broadway on glaze fabric. It was perfect for the collar and I decided the sleeves would look great too. As the pinafore is so plain, I thought this blouse would dress it up. I won't go through the full construction, only the parts I did differently to the instructions given. First, I only made the sleeves and collar with the broad rayon glaze, and the difficulty with this is that the see-through in places. That means the seam allowances hidden inside would be visible in parts. I needed to adjust my construction methods to hide these. Starting with the collar, I used two layers for the top collar. A layer of the regular cotton under the broad rate on glaze. I fixed these together first, sewing around the exterior inside of the seam allowance. Going forward, I treated this as a single piece and carried on with the instructions given. So here you can see the combined top collar with two layers. This was fixed to the bottom collar to form the completed collar section. So in all, there are three layers of fabric. To reduce bulk, I eliminated the interfacing from the collar section as it was not necessary with this much fabric. A second change was using French seams. This pattern only has one centimeter seam allowance, which can make French seams a little difficult. I used them throughout as the seam allowances were visible through the holes in the pattern cotton and the thin cotton of the top. I used French seams to attach the sleeves. The full tutorial of how to achieve this look is linked above. As you can see this is really neat and is great for anyone who does not have an overlocker but wants the pristine finish inside and out. To complete my blouse, I added buttonholes and buttons. These buttons I got from an old stain and worn shirt I was recycling. Here are the final two garments and my completed outfit. Both garments can be worn independently with other things. This loose fit shirt blouse is basic, but the sleeves and collar add drama to elevate the look. It's finished with French seams throughout and is as neat on the inside as the outside. The pinafore is a classic body skimming fit with an A-line skirt. The vertical seams are mirrored on the back of the dress. There is a dip back and a cross straps attaching to a bust line with braces and bibs fastening. Here you can see the slight texture difference from cutting the panels in opposing directions. It is not so dramatic in natural light, but I wanted you to see why we tend to cut needle cord in the same direction. My name is Elfie So and I create sewing tutorials for all abilities. If you have enjoyed today's video, hit like to help my channel grow and if you want to see more, please subscribe to be notified of future videos. Happy sewing!